Hi. Hello. Arigato. What you don't know is I recorded this just before. <laughs> I didn't have an SD card in the camera. So I have no right in telling anyone what to do about anything, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Hi, my name is Les, and I am a professional filmmaker. Well, no, I'm not a filmmaker. Photographer? I'm a professional photographer. Photographer. Oh, God. I am an entrepreneur. Nerd, nerd. An entrepreneur. And I am an entrepreneur. A mech. A mech. Get the business. Hi, my name's Les. And I'm a professional, there's a dog coming. And I'm a professional. I am a professional at a bunch of things. Remy, come here, what are you doing? Do you wanna go on camera? This is Remy. She is one of the office dogs. She is very personable. Remy, say hello. I don't think the camera's gonna pick up on you. Um, anyway, she's cute. So there you go, that was for free. Hi. Oh my God. Is the rails are fought, the, the wheels are coming off really quick. Anyway, I'm just going to record this and see. Here we go. Hi, my name is Laz, and I'm a professional photographer, and mainly in the fashion space. Um, that's it. That's me. No, that's not true. Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the first, the inaugural, the the numero uno video. Um, of me. My name is Laz and I am a professional photographer and videographer mainly in the fashion space uh, based in Australia. So I co-founded a women's fashion label with my wife Rach. So my last five years has been spent in Founderland um, but I also developed a passion for photography and obviously because I'm in fashion uh, it has heavily slanted towards fashion photography. Uh, I also do commercial work but the bottom line is, I thought it was about time to start getting on here and sharing some knowledge and tidbits and thoughts around my workflow. I am producing um, some work that I'm quite proud of and I've had some great opportunities in this space. So I'm passionate about enabling other people to find their creative um, passion and, and to really develop their skill sets in whatever that may be. So today I wanted to start off the channel and start off our little community with a little tutorial that I recorded earlier. Now it was recorded via Loom and I was wearing AirPods. So, you know, as the channel grows, as I get better at doing this thing, um, obviously the production value will go up, but uh, bear with the audio quality, especially on the tutorial side because it was recorded with AirPods. But um, what you're gonna see is six to seven minutes uh, of me walking through my complete uh, photography editing process in Capture One of a test shoot. I, I shot a guy called Lockie today. Um, he's an unsigned male who's looking to get signed to an agency. Um, and he came in just for some really basic portfolio shots. So it was a great example for me to record uh, my post-production workflow. So bringing in the raw file, showing you how I kind of go through everything and get the image to a final product that I'm really happy with. So hopefully if you can hang around for those six to seven minutes, you'll get something, especially if you're into photography, I feel like you know, you'll pick up something and I might check in with you after the video. Um, but yeah, I really hope that you grab something. It could be one point or something that really changes the way that you process your um, photos and hopefully we can grow together as creatives um, and just keep on pushing the envelope and, and growing our own skill sets and our passions. So I'll check back in with you after this video. Okay, so here we are. Um, I have just shot Lockie, who's an unsigned model uh, living in London, um, wanted to take some photos. So I shot this on the Fuji GFX 100S. Um, natural light in the studio here. Um, so I've imported the raw files into Lightroom. Um, if you can see, I've already edited some. So this is the natural light look against the white background. So that's before and after. So I'm going for a really simple, clean uh, filmic look, but I can't use the same settings I'd used before because obviously I've changed um, scenarios. So now I'm shooting in a much more contrasty environment. So 
what I normally do from start to finish is I will look at the overall image and I'll go, okay, I purposely shot this a little bit underexposed so I could protect the highlights because it was a lot of natural light coming in on his skin. I'm going to lift the exposure a little bit. I'm going to look at the contrast of the overall image of him. I actually like that amount of contrast, but I can look at this. That obviously looks too much. That probably looks a bit better if I look at it. So I'm actually backing the contrast off because I can add it in later. So if we go before and after, you can see I'm actually bringing up um, a little bit of contrast. I'm not going to touch brightness and saturation yet. Um, highlights, I don't normally touch unless it's really in need of it because I'm going to be doing curves anyway. But you can see if I'm changing this slider, it's not necessarily what I do. I'm going to look at shadows. That to me looks a bit HDR-y. Um, I might just go to five and just see. But overall, what I'm doing from this part of it is I'm looking at the overall image and trying to get it back to like something that I can work with for a base so that I can add to it from then. So I'll largely leave these things alone. Um, I've got a shortcut, so I just press Command L for a new layer. Um, and I generally use the curves now. So. Also, I'll look at white balance. I'm actually pretty happy with that white balance. It looks a bit magenta to me, but it looks pretty good. So if I didn't think it was good enough, I would look at this and I would kind of like look and go, okay, like does the white balance look good? Um, that's a bit green, that's a bit magenta. So look, I think that's kind of in the right ballpark. So I'm going to leave it as shot. Go back to my curves layer and this is where I look at this and I go, okay, there's Luma curves which don't affect saturation and there's RGB curves which do. So for me, I'm going to look at Luma curves and because I'm going for a filmic look, I'm going to pull down on the highlights because obviously the red, the right side of this is the highlights and you can see this different part of the image when I'm looking at his face. His face is actually in that big section here so i've shot it and exposed it correctly i'm not losing any data which means i can control the image how, however i want so i've pulled up when you shoot film it looks very flat so if i pull this down i know that this is his face so i can kind of pull this back up to where it was supposed to be and that looks about right so i also want to be able to see his face so i'm going to look at where this is the shadow area i think that it's going to be around here so you can see here i'm actually able to mess with this and i can pull this up ever so slightly so now we're even seeing more of his face and it's a bit of a softer roll off then i can look at the shadows and if i want i can bring these down i can lift it up a little bit more so it's all kind of preference so when i go to rgb curves this is the difference where i can create you know if I lift this up, it adds exposure, lift it down, it removes it. So I like this contrasted look. I'm going to lift it up a bit. I actually lift a little bit of shadow. So you can see here, that's kind of black. That I can lift it up a bit more. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up ever so slightly. And then I'm going to come to about here, which is in the shadows. And I'm going to pull it down. And that adds a little bit of saturation at the same time. So I'm looking for, that's before and after. You can see there's quite a difference now where it looks quite natural before it was quite contrasty as shot and now you can see that it's a lot softer you know the light looks really beautiful obviously i haven't cropped this i might just crop it a little bit so it's a little less distracting rotate it a little bit okay so that's what we're working with i don't care this this might not be the shot that i choose to keep but this is the first shot in this particular sequence so now we've got our background layer, which we largely untouched, our curves layer, which if I toggle this on and off, you can see I've pulled everything more into the middle. Everything feels more balanced. The highlights aren't as bright. We've got more shadow detail. Can add another adjustment layer now. And this is generally where I apply my creative look. So I will go into here and if I feel like the image is like too blue or whatever, I can go into this master slider and try and pull it a certain way. It's another way of getting a white balance without having to really play too much. So if I leave it in the middle, it looks a little bit magenta to me. So I could actually pull it a bit up and to the left and that could actually pull a bit of green. That looks not warm enough. So that probably looks about right to me. That's my global. Then I can go into here and say, okay, you know, what do I want to do with this? So if I'm looking at the shadows, I've just pulled that cooler because I naturally felt like that needed to 
happen so I can get a bit of color separation. So you can see now just by me pulling that out, that has really created a lot of color separation there. So I can also control the shadows and the, the shadows with this slider and the intensity of how much I'm injecting into here. So there's many ways to skin a cat. Mid-tones are generally your skin. Skin looks okay. I could probably warm up the skin a little bit, warm, in, warm up the skin a little bit. So if I pull that across there, it's more yellow now. So I'm just going to feel, I can remove or add a bit of punch in the mids, which is the skin tones. I feel that's sitting pretty nice. And then we've got the highlights. I think it looks all right. We could probably warm up the highlights a little bit once again, just to give it a bit more of a feel. That's too red. So if I go too crazy, see that? So I want to find somewhere in the middle. So I don't want to necessarily make things look weird. You know, that looks really purple. That looks really blue. That's green. So it's all about kind of like not overdoing it. But if I pull it somewhere in here, that looks pretty good to me. And then I can look at, okay, where is the image sitting? Is there enough, you know, contrast in the image so that to me feels pretty good i can do this on and off so now you're starting to go with a really different look i've got better skin tones there's some color separation there the image looks a bit more cohesive so if i was really pedantic i could really go over this image and, and kind of readjust things but for now i'm pretty happy with what that's doing so that's pretty much it. And then I would potentially retouch. Um, there's no need in this case. Um, and that's it. Hopefully you learnt something. Soon. How was that? Was that all right? I'd love your feedback. So if you enjoyed that, please let me know. Please comment. Subscribe if you love the content, if you feel like you've learned something. Uh, hit the bell so that you get notified of a new video. You know, I'm starting from scratch, but I'm really happy to document how this happens and I'm happy to grow the channel with you, with your direction and your input. So thank you for taking the time to watch. My Instagram handle is laz.smith, which you can see kind of my most current goings on. I don't keep it as current as I should, but I will try and keep it more up to date. You'll see them behind the scenes of what I'm doing day to day. You can obviously contact me on there and you can chat if you feel like there's something we can chat about. Um, but yeah, look forward to giving you more videos. I'll be doing gear reviews. I'll be talking through why I left Canon and now I shoot on a certain uh, gear, a certain vendor, which I love. Um, you know, I'll be talking about video and photo, even share some stuff about business. So there's, there's a bit for everyone in there. Um, but yeah, would love you to subscribe, become part of the journey, um, and share some stuff with me. And I don't know, maybe you can learn some things. Maybe you can develop your own skills. Maybe you can create a career out of something you see as a hobby at the moment. Who knows? The sky's the limit. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next in the video. In the next video. I I might see you in the next in the video. I don't know if you're in the video, if I know you already and I'm going to use you. Anyway, bye.